Hi, it's Yuris and welcome to Tattoo Shop Talk. This will be a bit long and a bit choppy episode. I had a checkup from this health and safety institution and I want to do a checklist and share it with you what points they go through, how it went for me and what things I had issues with and how did I fix them. Some of the points will go over all multiple years and it's a bit choppy episode because I tried to cut out all the empty spaces, all the ums and ums that I did, so it's shorter somehow. I also have a few points here that I scribbled down while editing because um, because I forgot to tell, tell them when I was there in the shop. And there will be one important note in terms of hygiene course that we have obligatory in Denmark. I think it might be a good hack if your country don't have rules set yet. And few points that I forgot. So for those who are interested, they can stick around for those extra few points that I forgot to mention while I was in the shop. I will also add all the possible links in the video description and I will upload checklists to my webpage so you can have a look at it, you can download it if I will figure out how to do it technically, but it shouldn't be a rocket science. Longer episode. If this kind of stuff is for you and you are new to the channel, then consider subscribing and press likes and share your thoughts at any point if you have anything to say. If you are from Denmark, if you had the same or similar experiences or I forgot to mention some important points. So yeah, let's go there. Bam. Hi, it's Yuris and welcome to the Two Shop Talk and welcome to my shop. And today I have some notes with me. Recently I had a checkup from this health and safety institution. I call it health and safety institution on Danish. It's some crazy word like Sikkerhelsturisen. Anyway, nobody Danish understands it when I try to say it. And I have a checklist what they go through. They don't send out these checklists anymore. These are from three years ago, I think, or two years ago when after a checkup you get a checklist where it's like all the points that they went through, there's yes or no answer, or a little note that you have to pay attention to. I started to film it at the back in the office, but then I decided that it would be a bit better if I show in environment what was the issues and how did I fix them. So I will go through these points and I'll have some comments on some of them, and I will also have some comments on what I have heard on some forums and people say, which was just a noise and it wasn't actually true or it more likely depends on situation. So that will be my personal opinions. This is more interesting for Danish audience, uh, Danish tattooists, Danish shop owners who have tattoo shops and who had those checkups or they will have those checkups. At least I can share my experience and you can maybe learn from my mistakes or get some good out of it. And for Danish customers also maybe some things to pay attention to and see and what might seem dodgy in some shops. My shop, like I say, this is my first shop. I did what I can. I did most of the things myself because of the financial reasons maybe in the future I can upgrade to something or upgrade this place but uh, this is best I could and it did count it was third checkup in like four years time let's go into episode and see what's up like I said it's more interesting for Danish audience because it's Danish rules unless you are in some countries where they, those rules are coming in place and maybe you have any chance or access to get involved and help or do some tips or maybe made those rules similar to here and you can have the same hygiene certificate and work in between at least two countries. That's also something to keep in mind. Let's, let's just go into it. This information is nothing secret. It's all available online. It's just in a bigger form in the tattoo regulations and the tattoo law. Also in that institution's page, which is sick.dk and there you can also get downloadable materials that you have to have in the shop. Maybe if you've seen on conventions, these type of things that's, um, yeah been handed out to people. So let's start with the first thing, it's registration and documentation. Is the tattoo site on the list of registered tattoo sites? That's available at sick.dk. You can punch in your city's area code and see which shops are registered. And then it's also, is the information about affiliated tattooists updated in the registry so you can see on which site which tattooist is registered. It's the owners of business who can put on and take off people from that registry. If it happens that let's say you had an argument, you left the place and you are still registered in your previous place, you can call up the institution and they'll take it down. So that's not a big deal. 
one phone call and it's sorted. Next point, store properly on site documentation for the use of ink and can that documentation be handed out to the customer. Uh, many shops use, bigger shops use this thing called ink paste and that's where you register your inks. You have little barcodes and you use like, uh, you do little notes on which customer you use which inks. My business is a small shop and I don't want to have another subscription. So instead of that, I do it manually. I give consent forms to fill to people and they fill out the information, answer a bunch of questions. And then on the back, I just write like butterflies on ribs or like a quote on arm. And then I put, for example, here it's 2220. And then I have this little Google Docs document where I register which inks I bought, what's the batch number, what's the expiry date. Then I can track back that on this customer, I use that ink and this number goes to that ink, which would be kind of like a barcode. Yeah, I did that because sometimes it's more inks and then it's a longer list of doo -doo 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 ingredients a one note there you have to when you put down where you bought inks you have to have company and company's address and also if address changes you have to note from which date it has been changed again uh, the idea is if something happened to inks so they can backtrack your shop where you bought it from maybe they had some issues in storage facilities or something like that so it's all this chain of backtracking so yeah Write down where you got it from and the place's address as well. And if it changes, note when it changes. Next point is information material prepared by the Danish agency for patient safety for the consumer handed out before tattooing performed. So I printed out a bunch of these things. It's them with the tiger. Now they are available also in English. I had to update them. That was one note noted this time in a checkup. And I also had them printed out. I shrunk them so I could put two of those on one A4 sheet of paper. But there's a note that the document cannot be changed. And for some reason, resizing also is considered change. So maybe it's some readable standard size or something like that. Anyway, it's there. Have them in the shop. I have them laminated. I have them on a handout, so it is easy peasy to get. Available at sick.dk. You just have to browse a bit there. Is there a certificate of hygiene course? We have them hanged there with all the certificates. First time when the certificate was introduced, lady checking my place had a little issue. She was like, oh, why it's on English? But then a few phone calls and it was all good. Because I also mentioned, like, if that's an issue, then, then there's like another 300 tattooists who, have, who went to... English speaking course and they have that certificate on English but that wasn't an issue that's a little just note what else we have rooms uh, that's where the fun stuff starts has floors walls doors into tattoo cleaning and storage rooms washable surfaces and they are kept visibly clean I repaint my walls basically once a year or if there's something suspicious and uh, something needs to be sorted there was a little panic on some local forums and there was gentlemen being all upset that they came to his place and they didn't like his walls and his floors and all that. I wish this situation was better, but this is my first shop and I do most of the things myself and I do best I can. And it's not that fresh looking. So there's the walls, that's other tattoo area and it's all been like repainted. I repainted these parts with this washable paint and they just came in and they're like yeah it's good so that person who had those issues I don't know what the situation was exactly but it might be that that place was actually not visibly clean or maybe it was just a shithole same applies for the floors I would want my floors better but this cuts and for it looks visibly clean, so it's all good. This year I had issues with the room. I had issue there. This panel was kind of a bit off the wall, but while they were here, I put a screw in and they're like, cool, there's no gaps and now it's fine. So easy peasy fix. This year it was more fun. Also the visibly clean part, like I was cleaning the whole shop all the week before they came. On the day when they came, she just looks at the corner and she's like, oh, there's dust and it looks, it's not visibly clean. And I was like, I just cleaned the space, so I don't know. And also I had issue with that radiator there. Uh, it was in a gray color and there was some like different color sort of marks on it. So that didn't seem visibly clean enough. And on this side here, right there, there was a little bit of rust. So that was also an issue, but now it's repainted. I send them pictures 
and it was all good. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures of how it looked before. I have some, so I'll try to put them in. The problem was here. There's a cables up there and they were coming down here on the wall. They are in these plastic tubes, but there was some issue that the dust can collect there. Also, I had issue with all these parts. There were like some filling that was uneven. So basically I changed these parts. I put them a bit wider so they co cover all the dodgy areas and made it all smooth and nice and without any gaps or rough surfaces. Also my favorite door is missing. That I was fixing that door during lockdown and I stripped the paint of it. Then I had a checkup during lockdown that I put extra shiny lack part. And this time the person who came to check was like, touched it and was like, oh, there's some rough surface, some dust can gather there. So it's all about the dust basically. Also, there were old paint on hinges. That also was an issue because again, dust can collect there. So that was a bit disappointing, but it kind of makes sense. Yeah, all this stuff here is new. There was a cable exposed as well. Well, it was in that plasticky bit, which was repainted multiple times so I just put this cable canal and they had a little dots in the old frame which was from the probably from nails just little dots kind of makes sense it can collect dust how dust from there will get there that's a different question this is all new this is all sanded repainted all these cables are hidden right here so I built an extra extension of a wall so it's all covered and nothing can collect dust. Those were the issues that were sorted. That thing up there is a IKEA Bluetooth speaker and two years ago I had an issue. It has a little like a fabric front part and that was issue because it's a fabric and it's in the two area and that can collect dust. While they were here I removed it and it was all good. So this counts. Furniture and all that I guess it's all good. Stations are good. They are cleanable, washable. I have the one that's all bed here, another that's all bed there, and the same station, where is it there? Stuff for work we keep in these IKEA cupboard things, there's all the plasticky bits, like for packing, tattoo machines, so that was all good, this is where I keep all the stuff for tattooing, and then in the main storage room I only keep the big stuff, everything else is stored in this area, so we have grips, needles, all the things for setup, and I have these cupboards here that are pretty neat. These things back here, they're also from Ikea. They are all smooth surfaces, that's all good. And a cleaning room that is only used for piercing stuff. So they didn't really pay attention to it because they don't care about piercings. They only care about tattoo related stuff. Has furniture in tattoo, cleaning, storage rooms, washable services and, w and kept visibly clean. One of the issues in one of years, I had a smaller bed from Tetzel and they didn't like that the, the Velcro part is exposed, but it's a bit more exposed on the mini bed than on this one. But again, phone call away and that was all good. Is cleaning, disinfection, sterilization of tattoo equipment in a shielded area or separate room if necessary? So mine was in separate room because there was a door. Now I removed the door because I didn't have time to sort all the issues with the room. But it's here, but it's for piercing so they don't actually care about it. And it's sort of shielded, so I have this plastic bit. So it's more like so people don't get in and out and don't start to use that sink. So it's a separate and shielded area. But I don't care about it because it's in regards piercings. It's clean, sterile equipment, unclean, dirty equipment, clearly divided into clean, unclean in the cleaning area. That's for piercings. They don't care about it. When I worked in a shop where tattooists used autoclave, we had a little shelf. So in my situation, I autoclave things. I get them right out of autoclave and bring into the separate room. Multiple tattooists working and sterilizing stuff. We had a shelf for a separate for clean sterilized products because sometimes somebody wants to sterilize their stuff. They don't care about other people's stuff. They would just check it out of the autoclave. So we had the shelf. So, you know, if there's something in the autoclave, you see it's been sterilized put it there and then do your thing. So that's a good thing to have. For me, I'm doing my own thing and it's all good. Is tattoo and storage rooms animal free? Apart from guide dogs and yeah, they should be free. So no animals in here. 
I'm not sure how it goes with those comfort animals, but I think that's a different topic. The two stations as well as cleaning area free of food and beverages other than beverages necessary for the customer's well-being during tattooing. No foods in here unless someone's being dizzy and they need a sugary beverage. So that's, that should be the answer. If you need to eat lunch, go out or have a separate room, have a staff room, have an office where you can do that. Now to two stations and this is very sort of, it depends on situation because there's no like, no set numbers. So first example would be, is there a suitable distance between the tattoo stations? In my instance, it did cut, so it's not a big space. Now camera is at the very end of the room. Uh, we have one door here. It's basically, I'm touching one wall and there's half a meter to other. But we have this situation going on, then we have cupboards, and then there's another station, which is not used that often because my colleague comes in every now and then. But this did cut, so as you can see in this instance, it was fine. So next topic is, is there from the two stations area easy access to separate sink? And I have a sink set up here and it's with this situation, which works fine. There was a funny moment where the person checking this situation, uh, she did a note in her check marks, then she paused, walked up to the sink and sort of double checked if it's working. I was like, okay, and then she turned around and she was like, don't think that I'm crazy. I've been in the shops where they have a setup sink, but it's not connected. So she had to double check that it's all good because some people are creative, you know, they want to get around the rules somehow. And I also have a separate sink that I use as a dirty sink. That's for cleaning, sterilizing, piercing equipment. And also that's where the dirty stuff goes. So all the rinse caps and that type of stuff. And this is just for cleaning hands. If you don't have that option, just for a peace of mind, you can get those little things that solidify liquids, you know, so you don't have to worry about where to put dirty liquids at all. Next point. Is there from the two stations area easy access to wall mount and dispensers for hand soap and hand sanitizers? Sanitizer, soap, papers. Note on a sink, if you have a sink that's with the lifty one, make sure you wash your hands. You will be asked to wash your hands and, and show how you sanitize and wash them and dry them. And if you have that type of sink, then make sure your hands are completely dry before you close the sink with the paper towel. Don't just like dry it a bit. Make sure you you show that hands are dry. Then you take a dry paper towel or napkin or whatever it's called, and then you close the tap. That's from somebody's experience. Is there from the two stations area easy access to wall mounted closed dispenser for paper napkins? Boom. Is there from the two station area easy access to waste container? We use little IKEA things at every station. One is just here, so it's easy access from the sink and from one of the stations and the next station have its own bin. So that shouldn't be a problem and that should be an easy fix. Is furniture for tattoo artist or customer that it comes in contact with during tattoo cleaned and disinfected between each customer? And obviously it is and there's a little note that in local regulations you have to clean it. First you clean it with water and soap and then you clean it with alcohol. And I asked what about the surface disinfectants which is kind of like more medical, more serious stuff and they're like mm. The rules says this thing. So if it's not too contaminated, then you can use only one of the things, but for most part, you want to use both. So it's better that you use your little spray bottle, boom, 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 spray it, clean it, and then spray it, disinfect it with alcohol. And this stuff they don't really admit, even though it's high level medical surface disinfectant but it's not what's said in the rules. And they also said that tattooists try to fight back, you know, all this attitude that like, I've been working for this many years and blah, 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 but that's too late to complain now. You should have get involved when those rules were made. They just come in and check rules that are already there. So don't try to fight the system. It's not gonna work. They have their checklists and that's how they go. Now points on hygiene and protective equipment. Have people performing tattooing or handling equipment for this, hands free of wounds and skin infections. They mentioned that they might be a bit easier on paper cuts, but I guess again, depends on situation. Correct answer is your hands have to be free of any cuts and infections, and only then you can work. None of the like, I can put a plaster on or bandage, that's not gonna work. So the correct answer is no cuts, 
only then I can work. Is proper hand hygiene performed? And then you, that's the point where you have to show how you wash your hands. I felt like I'm in a kindergarten and I will get my certificate that I know what germs are. Use a disposable apron plastic. Have to have them. None of your fancy leather aprons will work. Yeah, disposable stuff only. Prepare the customer's skin where tattoo must be tattooed properly before tattooing begins. And the correct order is you clean it with soap and water or soapy water, then you shave, then disinfect, then stencil, then tattoo. Just memorize it. And if you use autoclave for tattoo stuff, or basically for any stuff, but they care about tattoo stuff, then you have to put dates on when it's autoclave because it has expiry. So you have to backtrack when you did autoclave them. Uh, I have a little stamp for piercing stuff or tattoo stuff if it need be, but you can also write it down with the hand, it's just if you have the two equipment that's sterilized, it has to have dates. Storage and handling. Keep clean the two equipment, sterile the two equipment and an opened ink in a closed cupboard. Sterile stuff should be separate from clean stuff and that's where I had issue first year. And first year I had issue with this cupboard because there was some of the stuff that was for setup due to a space issue down there and some of the stuff was up there and that was an issue. So what I should have done, move some boxes around. I, I, I did do it on a day. But still, because that issue was sort of seen, it had to be sorted officially, so I still had to make a picture of that, email them, and it was all good. Also, for some reason, I remember, maybe I was wrong, that it should be marked. Maybe it just should be obvious that there had to be marked that it's a, for sterile equipment only, and that will come to the next issue that some people had. I had only that issue this year. I kept everything else sticker free, but even though that I printed out a note, sterile stuff only, and put a scotch tape over it, that was considered as a sticker. And then for inks, I have this cupboard, which works fine. Boom, there's a sterile water, bigger ink bottles, smaller ink bottles, and an open ink bottle. Back in the days, we had them more. And I had a little note with a label maker, new inks only and this time lady checking the stuff she said that's considered as a sticker so would you like to take it off and i said of course there was even a whole thing called sticker gate in local forums that for example like back in the days people would put cool stickers of some tattooists tattoo shops tattoo equipment on their stations mm, that's not allowed so you need clean stations and in tattoo area nothing with stickers. So yeah, I removed that sticker. I removed sticker from cupboard that I put on. I had this bottle of alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, and that was like isopropyl alcohol 70% note, so you know that it is alcohol in there. She said, that's also a sticker. Then I asked, but how about that? That's also a sticker. And then they said that if it comes from manufacturer, it's considered a good sticker. If you put the same thing on yourself, that's your sticker, that's a bad sticker. So for example, like good old days, you got your cool kids cartridges and you have this stuff and you want to put it on your cupboard and it's in tattoo area, that's a problem. So none of this stuff, all cleanable, because this can collect dust, I guess. Okay, I guess I was a bit ahead of time. No sterile equipment is mixed with clean equipment. That's the story of this cupboard where I had to switch things around. Is tattoo equipment that penetrates the skin or comes in contact with skin tattooed? Sterile, so that means like needles and tips basically. No disposable equipment is not marked with single use. I haven't seen disposable equipment that have not been marked like it, only maybe some. I don't know, prototype cartridges or something, but most of them have single use only. Is the two equipment that does not penetrate skin or comes in contact with skin visibly clean? And that was mostly in regards like the two machines. Uh, I was asked to show my tattoo machines. Boom, she randomly took few machines, looked at them sort of, it's all good. There's no dirty stuff on it or in it. You know, took a few tattoo machines and I don't know what she has seen, but she said that this is very good. Also, when my face showed that I'm upset about things that I have to change in the shop, because at the time it seemed quite a bit inexpensive, I had my thinking face on. The lady said like, no, 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 we also marked a lot of good things. So don't stress that we talk about things that needs to be fixed. And that's the point where I want to 
stress that they don't come to get you they come to check that things are done right and you have option to like fix those things and then you have time to fix it and then you have another note and then if you don't fix it then you have to i think pay for another checkup and if then things are still bad then it's sent to another institution where they involve police and whatnot and that can be expensive or troublesome next point is the date of opening stated on open ink and are other information readable and it's easy peasy there's my sort of my barcode for to know backtrack which ink is it and there's a little date when it's open for 123 there's all the information on an ink bottle i asked them about these little books should we keep them and they said from their perspective this is actually a bad thing because this is stuff what can be contaminated like you know little rubber band and probably it can collect some dust as well but most of the inks state that they can be opened for a year yeah this one says 12 months there were in some local forums that topic raised that why it's only six months in denmark and the answer was that like we should be lucky that it's even that because it's something in regards of how medical like liquids are stored yeah we are lucky that we are allowed to keep them for six months on other hand you have to use sterile water for all the tattoo related stuff if you dilute inks basically everything what's involved with tattooing sometimes it can be pricey if you don't have many people working to use bottle a day because it can be only opened for 24 hours the same institution recommended to go to pharmacy and you can get smaller sachets there and save some money little hack that we've been told on hygiene course is that this is sterile water for diluting inks soaps and all that stuff this is dilution liquid for inks which is classified as ink without pigment therefore that can be open for half a year so if you need to dilute inks that's more reasonable option even though it seems uh, more expensive at first place. My little Caesar magnet. I got a tool from Lidl and it just sticks at the back here. And this is thin enough that uh, we can put scissors there and lose them a tiny little bit less. Uh, we're getting to the end of it. Is opening date on inks within six months. That's why we have those numbers there. And they do check them. They also check expiry dates on your needles and grips. Not all of them, but they sort of look as you can see on boxes and select at random and double check if it's all good. Are ink tanks and bottles undamaged? Common sense. Is ink caps used for tattooing? Common sense, everybody uses ink caps. That's all good. Yeah, and the last point is the use of sterile water, dilution of ink. It can be open only for 24 hours. So it's not like you opened yesterday, you throw it out today, but if you open at six o'clock yesterday, it's good till six o'clock today these are where all the points i will upload them on web page and i will also put like a danish version uh, which is original one this is google translated so it can be a bit funky in some points if you have some brain you'll figure it out like i said they don't send them anymore so probably some things have changed they also mentioned that they are more strict with rules that the rules are the same they have to be a bit more serious so it applies to same places and yeah i fixed a bunch of stuff but mainly it was like carpentry so for the last couple of weeks i have been busy fixing up this place if i'm not your tattoo guy i might be your drywall guy you know issues were mainly in places like this i had a little gap there so i had to close it that corner was not connecting completely so i had to change those so yeah i fixed up all that stuff it'll be easier if i put a pictures and i can put the picture that I sent them as well which cut the case and the case is closed they came in a, in the beginning of January now it's end of January so I had two and a bit weeks to fix stuff uh, so I had to morning and evening do that and work in the daytime and this is like camera is almost at that end of the shop this is my shop one station there one station there I also asked if I put uh, somebody in that room and what she did she said basically if you can come in wash your hands and get back to workstation without any obstacles it should be all good but let's say if i put this station here and you can't freely access the sink that can be an issue as you can see 
floors are these like laminate floors but they said this is good this is cleanable it looks visibly clean so it should be all good and now the points that i forgot the first one is on hygiene course and i think it's interesting because when we were on hygiene course i was asking gentleman who makes it he said that this course is valid in europe and my question was uh if i have a guy coming in who's with other european countries certificate will that work and he said no it has to be his course but then last year or year before when i had a checkup i specifically asked people who check the place how was that working with like a european guy coming in and they said if that other country's hygiene course covers specifically same points that are listed on a hygiene certificate so if that country's course have covered same points then it should be valid in Denmark it don't have to be from Denmark it just have to cover same points and that I think is quite cool so if your country are just making those rules and you have an option to chip in on them why not to add same rules so at least your country's certificate is definitely valid in Denmark obviously there would be a lot of explanation to do if that situation would become a reality and it would be checked but still something to keep in mind and also why not communicate in between countries then on inks i forgot to mention that i also prepared folders digital and i printed out all the information i could find on websites on suppliers and also we have a from local supplier even a little qr code where you can scan it and go to the info on inks they didn't ask for it but just in case i have it so if anyone needs information on inks like customer or day i can have a physical folder and a folder on computer and then I forgot to mention that for people who use lamps they also need to be covered but my lamps are off the floors they are up close to the ceilings so that wasn't an issue for me but still it has to be cleanable or you have to be able to cover and then in that regard there was also that there's different classification of surfaces so let's say the one that you actually work on obviously you will pay more attention to in terms of covering or and cleaning it and it's a different where it's just like somebody's been sitting on so for example chair where your customer sits on and the armrest where you actually tattoo on is a bit two different classifications of surfaces same applies let's say you have a standing lamp and that's a different surface again in comparison to your tattoo station or armrest so yeah that was my note that i forgot to mention if you know something more that I forgot to mention or you had different experiences, then leave that in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. See you in the future episodes. And thank you for sticking around for a longer episode. Cool. Out. Peace. Peace. Out. Everyone's good. Stay safe. Hygiene courses. Stay hygienic and clean.